Welcome to Physically Based Rendering. The PPR material is a material that uses a physically based rendering lighting model, and that has a few extra steps to set up here in Touch Center. So let's take a closer look at how we can use this in our render networks. Let's use the tab key to open up our OpCrete dialog and start by heading over to components and beginning with the same elements we might use in a regular render network. I'm going to hold down the control key and add a camera and a light here into uh, my network. Head over to tops and add a render top here as well. Now, let's go ahead and move these over just a little bit and then scoot our render top over here as well. I'm going to work with a torus here today. So let's head over to surface operators and let's begin by adding a torus here into our network. And let's go ahead and right click on the output of the torus, head over to components and add a geometry component here to our network. Now I'm going to change the orientation of this ever so slightly. I'm going to make sure this is arranged on the Z axis, and I'm going to back my camera off this just slightly, so we're a little further away. Next, let's go ahead and add a PBR material here to our network, and let's assign the PBR material to our geometry as material. Now we'll see uh, out the gate that we don't have anything that shows up that doesn't look very, uh, in, very engaging or exciting just yet, and that's all right. Let's next head back over to components and let's add an environment light. Now, an environment light is an important element to use when you're uh, working with a physically based rendering pipeline uh, because a physically based material uh, relies on some of the environmental uh, contribution for the lighting model. So let's go ahead and add a movie file in top here. And let's use Alt N to add a null here as well. Now, our PPR model wants uh, an equirectangular map here uh, to feed our environment light. So let's go ahead and open up our file picker and let's select, in this case, our cloudy ocean uh, equirec and hit open. Next, we can drag this right on top of our environment light and assign this as our environment map. Okay, and now we can see out the gate, this is interesting. I've got a little bit of contribution here, nothing too exciting yet. And that's in part because if we take a closer look at our PBR uh, material, uh, if we look at the maps page, we're missing all of the maps that we might apply here. Now we can apply these individually as our own texture operators, or we can take advantage of the fact that we can use a single top, a substance top to apply all of these with one operator. So let's go ahead and here in tops, let's find a substance top. Let's add the substance top here into our network. And let's assign that as our substance top. Now, this is a great start. We can see here down in our PBR material, this looks pretty interesting and promising right away. I do see that I have a warning here for my render. So let's middle mouse click on the render top to see what's happening. Ah, so our material is normal mapping, but the SOP doesn't have any tangent attributes. That's all right, we can change that. And this is an important step anytime we're doing uh, any work with a PBR material. So let's uh, right click on the wire between our torus and our geometry. Let's insert an attribute create and drop that into our network and make sure that we compute our tangents. Okay. And that's already starting to look pretty interesting. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the display flag to put that in the background here for us. And let's click on our parameters. Now we can see that if we head over to our RGBA page, our RGB page, excuse me, that we have a few parameters we can control. So for example, we might turn our metallic up or down. Uh, we can turn our roughness up or down, and this is going to help us see some of the reflective qualities inside of our environment. So our environment light, we can actually see uh, how the sky is being reflected here in our torus. And if we take our geometry and rotate it slightly, we'll even see a little bit more uh, how that environment light is actually contributing uh, to some of the surface that we see here. Now I'm going to turn that roughness back up and let's head back to our substance material, our substance top, excuse me. And we can see that uh, part of the way our substance top is configured is that we've got a uh, an option for what we're using in our graph and what we're previewing. So let's actually change this from being just simple to be uh, maybe concrete instead. Now let's take our geometry and rotate it again. And right now our geometry is using this substance material. Now it's not particularly high res, but we can always turn up the resolution on a substance material by changing the comment page. And what we want to do is let's actually look and see if we change our graph from concrete to wood here. 
that's a really interesting uh, material here. And we can see actually if we head over the PBR and turn down our roughness that we have some control over how shiny, how reflective that is. Let's also go back to our movie file in and let's actually see what uh, happens if we change what the environment uh, map looks like. So if we switch, for example, over to our Palace of Fine Arts instead, we should see that we have much have a much brighter presentation here uh, in our PBR. There's one other thing that we can do that's pretty exciting when working with our PBR materials, and that's to use a PBR select. So let's, for example, uh, go ahead and double click in our network, head back over to tops and grab a substance select. Our substance select accepts a substance top. So let's drag our substance top right onto our substance select. Let's go ahead and in this case, maybe extract uh, our roughness here. And we're gonna go ahead and use a level top connected to our, uh, our roughness. And I'm gonna use Alt-N to create a null. Next, I'm gonna come back to our PBR, head over to maps, and I'm gonna drag this onto roughness to override our roughness map. Now what I can do is I can use my level top here to make adjustments to uh, just that single map to then modify this existing um, substance designer material. Now this is really powerful for working with existing materials that you might find on the web. Uh, there's a wide variety of places where you can find free materials to use um, just by searching for uh, substance or PBR materials. This is just a peek at some of the ways that we can work with physically based rendering and it's really exciting to see this feature available here inside of touch designer